The future is officially upon us. Hi, I'm Scott Ott with Stephen Green and Bill Whittle, and this Right Angle episode is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, just some exciting video that we're going to try to show a little bit of during this uh, episode of the team at Jetman Dubai reaching another milestone in their effort to make an autonomously flying jetpack that a man can strap on his back and take off and, and go where he pleases. This time, the breakthrough was actually in the ability for a pilot to take off from the ground and then transition into high altitude flight. Previous flights have been from altitude. So they would like drop from a helicopter or something like that and then ignite the engines. But in this case, they were able to start off on the ground and take off and fly to a, an altitude of approximately six thousand feet at roughly 150 miles per hour with uh, a jetpack apparently light enough so that a man can carry it it looked like he was carrying a, a school uh, backpack on his back when he was on the ground uh Stephen green uh, the three of us just watched this right before we rec recruit uh recorded this episode and you guys had not seen it before just yeah. give me your your reaction upon seeing this for the first time and and what it makes you think of as far as the possibilities that lie before us even during our own life times. Well, the, what I was expecting was something big, uh, not huge, huge, but something kind of like the jetpack at the beginning of Thunderball, the James Bond movie, which was practically a chair, you know, and he got he got one big leap out of it and then he lands and there's no way you walk around in this thing. It's like he's got a, a small airplane strapped to him. And and that was that this guy it's just walking around with a pair of wings on his back, looking like uh, Buzz Lightyear with a cooler paint job. Exactly. And, and he's, he's, he's walking around with this thing, and then he just casually takes off, zooming around. He isn't uh, – was it you or Bill who pointed out just how relaxed the pilot was? Amazing. And his hands are free. You know, he's got a control in each hand. I'm not sure exactly what the setup is, but I'm guessing one is throttle and the other is anyway. It, it, watching him do this just as casually as somebody else gets on an electric scooter. And by the way, th th this is the difference culturally between people who are looking backwards and people who are looking forwards. The big thing on the left is this whole micro mobility issue. Oh, electric bikes, electric scooters. That's the future. We're going to rebuild our Please. cities around these things. And all they're doing is sticking a battery pack on <sighs> 150 year old technology. Who gives a damn? This guy is flying around like Iron Man. If that's not the future, we're doing something extremely wrong. Now, Bill, uh, Steve pointed out that he looks very casual, as we discussed while we were watching the video. Um, you know, his kind of legs just hanging loose. His arm, He's able to wave his arms and kind of thrust his fist in the air while he's hovering and turning. Uh, now, a little background on this shows that every single movement that they made in that video was carefully planned in advance down to the fraction of a second. And he had practiced previously some uh, 50 preparatory flights and including more than 100 takeoffs and landings while with a cable on and a fall arresting device strapped to Excellent. him. So this takes a lot of work to make it look effortless. But there was one part of that video I could, because I was watching your reaction as you watched it, but there was one part that kind of, that I saw that kind of gripped you. What was happening there? Well, the, the, the part that was most impressive to me was when he translated from uh, hover flight to uh, aerodynamic flight. He just basically put his nose down and accelerated, and then the wing on his back started doing a lot of the work that the jet engines did. Um, I have to uh, – one small – uh, quibble with you though, Scott. You said he went to 6,000 feet. He didn't go nearly that high. He only went to 2,000 meters. And, uh, <laughs> other than that, it was. Well, that's because he was in Dubai, Bill, and he couldn't go to feet. <laughs> oh, well, that explains everything. Um, you know, the. <laughs> The, D Dubai sponsored it and Dubai put the money into it. Obviously, it's Fly Dubai, but the guy's a Frenchman. And um, and if this guy had been in defense of, of France in 1940, the Germans would have been beaten in three and a half hours. Uh, with a single th flyby. <laughs> with a single flyby. It's like, I'm going to come and fly over your troops, and then you'll surrender. It's like, oh, my God, look, he can fly. Uh yeah, that that kind of thing sounds petty and and uh, trite, and that's that's as as you know, that's my brand. But um, <laughs> but seriously, I, I'm not joking about that. In in a way, if he had been in charge of the defense of France, I suspect that France would have would have probably stopped the Germans. They had they had better 
They had more, they had more stuff. Let's put it that way. What they didn't have was leadership and they didn't have vision. They didn't have, and they didn't have confidence. That's what they didn't have. Um, and, and the Nazis had all of that stuff, but seeing this guy out there doing that, um, is just, uh, it's just, it's just great. I'm, I'm always delighted to watch people, um, take a chance like that. I was last couple, last weekend I was up, uh, which I still can't get out of my mouth without basically fainting. I was up at my uh, friend Bert Rutan's house. And we were talking about a number, a number of uh, vertical takeoff vehicles that look almost exclusively like um, manned, uh, you know, drones, multi, you know, multi-rotor kind of things. And he said there were a number of them there and none of them flew. Hmm. And I said, why? He said, I don't know. I, I went up to him. This is like the Pope going up to a, you know, to a parish priest in, in the backwoods of Ireland someplace and said, uh, so you guys say this thing flies? I said, yeah, we got all this video of it flying. He says, well, why don't you fly it? Well, we're a little worried about this and this. He says, I don't believe you then. I don't believe your video. I think it's all computer graphics. If you're not willing to fly it here, then you're not well, then it doesn't really fly. Uh, and and what reason I bring that up is because comes a point where you have to take that risk yeah. and you have to take a fatal risk. And and the guy's got a parachute. He recovered by parachute, didn't come back down and land. He just gave him more time aloft on fuel because hovering is very fuel uh, expensive. But that's his only life. You know, that's the thing I would say about um, about watching that guy and watching anybody that does this extraordinary stuff. That's the only life he's got. And um, and he believes in what he's doing. He believes in his product. He, he believes in his crew. And he's willing to risk the only life he's got in order to actually do it. Uh that is a fundamental difference between some of these uh, people that were at uh, Air Venture and other people as well. And it doesn't just apply to aviation. Comes a point where if you are following a dream, and this guy's not working for Dubai, you know, he's not. It, Dubai has Dubai has allowed him to make his personal dream come true. But it could have been anybody. Anybody with the money could have made this happen. But the main point is, is that this guy actually took his only single life into his hands. He's done it hundreds and hundreds of times now. And he and he's convinced me that that people can fly like birds, fly like birds, and that is just sheer courage. And that's all there is to it. It's just it's powered by courage, it's not powered by kerosene. Powered by courage is not made out of carbon fiber. It's made out of it's made out of heart. And um, and the people on the ground who send him aloft are obviously close friends of his. They're 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 a family. They've worked together for for years, if not decades, and. I think the thing that's most impressive about that video is not the technology. What's impressive about that video is that a is that a human being decided to go from a hover, uh, put his head down, get up to um, oh, I don't know seventy or eighty kilometers a, uh, an hour. He actually flew much faster than that. He went one hundred and fifty miles an hour apparently, uh, and, and and just and just and do it and. And I guess the only thing I just want to say about this, Scott, is that if you watch the clip again, and, and most people will, I hope you will, maybe we'll run a little bit of it again at the end of this episode. Instead of looking at the at the astonishing technology and the amazing control and the just the sheer beauty of it, just imagine that 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 that, that is you with your only life, and there are people who love you and care about you, and 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 you're willing to risk all of that for a dream. That's what the future was when I was a kid. And it seems to be coming back all over. You know, we spend an awful lot of time uh, dabbling in the political realm as we do, uh, essentially uh, pattering around in a cesspool, a mud puddle-like atmosphere. It seems like we're always looking down at the worst of humanity and uh, and just seeing things uh, in kind of a dreadful prospect and wondering how it'll ever get better. Um, that's why I did this episode, uh, because... This guy aimed his jetpack at the skyline of a gleaming city and rocketed off toward it at 150 miles per hour and then went practically straight up above it and then did a roll. I don't know if you'll see this in the video, but he did a roll and he did a loop and then he deployed his parachute. The next step in this process, by the way, is to be able to do that uh, takeoff from the ground, do the ascent to altitude and then return to the ground and land safely on his feet instead of having to come down with a parachute. Nice. Um, 
this is what it means to be a human being. <laughs> it means to, right. do, to dream and to try and to yearn and to sweat the details, frankly, to do uh, what Vince Lombardi used to call the grind. It's the all winners have always loved the grind. And that's those hundred takeoffs and landings on a tether with a safety catch, just trying to master that so that when you're out there and everything's on the line, including, as Bill pointed out, your own life, it's going to be either magnificent or a magnificent end to your life. And uh, it was just magnificent a, either way. a beautiful thing to see. Um, I, I, I'm re reminded of my son, Zachary. Uh, Zach is in his early 20s now. But when Zach was a little boy, I can still remember him sitting in his car seat in the back of the car and we'd be driving somewhere and we would point out things to him. And um, and I, I remember one point we were driving near uh, State College, Pennsylvania, and we said, Zachary, look, we were right next to a train track. Look at that train, Zach. And Zach looked at the train and he said, I want to drive it. And then yeah. we were driving along later and uh, Mount Nittany, which isn't much of a mountain, Steve, uh, you know, it's not Colorado, but there's a little lump called Mount Nittany out there in central Pennsylvania. And I said, look, look, Zach, look at Mount Nittany. And he goes, I want to climb it. What like, a kid. That was his instinctive reaction. Like whatever it was that he saw, he wanted to, to uh, challenge it. He wanted to conquer it. He wanted to dream big and achieve it. And, um, and he has continued in that track in his life. Like whatever he's done, he's always wanted to take it to the next level. Um, and I think that there is something that resonates with that guy. At that moment, when he took off horizontal across the water and then ascended above the city, there was part of me that went with him. And there was part of me that hopes that I never lose the ambition to aspire like that and the willingness to try. And uh, I hope you got half as much thrill out of this as I did. And we are grateful to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible. If you'd like to join these kind of people, uh, click that Become a Member link. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching. <laughs>